Hello YouTube. Um, you know, I contemplated not getting out of bed tonight as I was just so frustrated with last night and today. And, and I decided to actually come out. Not that this is a great time to finally come out, but uh, yeah, I'm out. Um, Saturday, March 11th, 2023. It's 11.44 p.m. It's, uh, it's kind of nice to be able to have one phone to record on and another one to check the time and date on. Uh, so I'm shooting video on the new Obama phone, Obama phone number four. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, but when it's showing up, uh, when it's showing up on other devices, it, it, it's called, it, it says A-C-K and some numbers. So, ACK. You know, like like the sound the aliens make in Mars Attacks. Ack, ack, ack. Which is kind of how I feel about this phone so far. Um, so the video I shot with it yesterday um, capped off at 10 minutes. I thought the phone was out of space because I know the phone doesn't have a whole lot of onboard space on it. And I, I checked it and now I forget how much it is. Um, whatever it is, it's, it's enough. I should have no problem shooting video between here and... Uh, the Wander Inn, which is where I left my car last night. Hey, look, there's the there's the Lime Scooter right there where I uh, left it parked and locked to the no parking sign. You know, it's kind of tempting to ride the scooter over to the bar, but um, yeah, I'm walking, and I'm I'm sort of regretting my decision to walk and just. Uh, pants and a t-shirt because it's a little, it's a, I'm a little chilly. Um, I was thinking it'd be warm enough for that sort of thing because it's in the, in the low sixties, but I'm a little, I'm a little chilly and wishing I had thrown a hoodie on. Um, in fact, contemplating, uh, yeah, you know, on second thought, <coughs> <coughs> on second thought, I do think I'm going to walk out. Oh, police looking at me like I'm suspicious. Um, I do think I'm going to. Um, do think I'm going to double back home, grab a hoodie, and ride that scooter right there. Yeah, I do find it weird that the. The app, the Lime app, I didn't really talk much about it uh, when I shot that video because I was my phone was just about dead when I ended my ride. In fact, I don't think I shot any video when I ended my ride. Come to think of it, the one where I rode out on a on a spin scooter to go uh, get my temp tag for my car and then rode a uh, rode a Lime scooter back. Yeah, I don't think I... It's kind of wild how that little green light pulsates there. That's neat. Um... Yeah, I didn't shoot a video at the end because my phone was down to 1%. Almost completely forgot about that. So, uh, I guess I should talk about the end of the ride while I'm here and it's like suddenly on my mind. Um, so, uh, I was coming down 46th Street, or coming down Oak Street, planning on parking like right in front of my place. And right as I got to, uh, right as I crossed 46th Street, um, a little like a no symbol, you know, like the red circle with the line through it, like you'd see in a no smoking or a no parking sign, but just that no symbol popped up on the dashboard, which the dashboard was weird, did not show a speedometer on the, uh, on the lime, uh, how my dashboard was on my spin. And like every lime that I've ever rode since the first generation limes, um, which first generation limes didn't even have a dashboard, but every lime I've ever rode since has always had dashboard. Well, I was going to try to put this part of the, <laughs> this area on display on the video, and it's so dark you can't see anything here anyway, so no point in that. I should just walk back home. Um, oh, and you know what? I don't want to ride that lime. That lime sucked. Memory's coming back to me from yesterday. Um, so yeah, it didn't, it didn't show the speed on the speedometer. I thought that was odd. Um, it did show a lime symbol with some of the slices missing, which I'm assuming was a battery gauge. Based on like what what when I started my ride, what the app was showing me that I had battery power in it, I'm guessing that's what it was. 
Um, anyway, yeah, there was a, there was a issue with the scooter I'd completely forgot about until right now. That makes me not want to ride it. The, um, handlebars were super crooked. I mean, it didn't make it unrideable, but it made it awkward. I mean, I want to say they were about 20 degrees to, to the right compared to how my wheel was going straight down the road, which, um, if you've ever ridden a bicycle or a scooter with handlebars super crooked, you realize just how thoroughly awkward that is. Um, it, it, it did make it a little more difficult to balance and just ride in general. So, um, yeah, not cool. Uh, and the other thing that threw me for a loop, now when I ended my my ride on the spin, as you if, if you've seen that video, <coughs> you would call, I got to the, the prompt, where it had, um, now I didn't shoot video of the prompts because I didn't have any way to do that, but I was talking about it after I started shooting video right after I locked the, locked the scooter up. Um, I got to a prompt where it asked me to use the cable lock to lock it to a bike rack. It's really funny because both apps are like, oh, you know, lock it to a bike rack on a sidewalk. Pfft. Where the fuck are bike racks on sidewalks? There's hardly any bike racks in Phoenix at all. And where there are bike racks, they're generally speaking on private property, which seems to me not a good place to park a, a, a rental scooter that's supposed to be, you know, that's kind of licensed to be on public space. I mean, you lock it up on private property, you're running the risk of the owner of that private property legitimately cutting the, uh, legitimately cutting the lock and, uh, and, and keeping it for not having permission to park it there. But, but I kind of digress with that stuff. Uh, anyway, um, see how the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, now we're going to my messy apartment, brace yourselves. It's, uh, it's not gotten better since I've shot, shot stuff in, inside. I, I've actually let it get worse. But if you watch this vlog at all, you know I've just been working. Mostly been working, just loads of overtime. And uh, probably my viewership is dropping. Most of my videos are just me driving to work and back and talking about work at Amazon. And that's pretty freaking boring to most people. It's honestly kind of boring to me. All right, what is... Yeah, those feel like shirts. <coughs> I'm not even sure where my hoodie is. Well, that's that's the shirt named Dave. I don't even know offhand where my hoodie is. That's the dirty shirt. Here's Sambo. It was impossible to see because just blackness uh, and, and the blackness. Uh, that's the sheet off my couch. I, I did have company over last night, so the couch is clear. Not that you can see it in this darkness. But, um, yeah, I had to clear it off the couch. Didn't really clean anything, so now everything that was on the couch is just in a box that I need to sort through. But, oh, come on, where's the damn light switch in here? Um, dang. I have absolutely... I wanted to just put on my green uh, Scottsdale Community College hoodie, but I'm realizing I have zero idea where it is, so, so that's not an option. That's not an option, and that sucks. And welcome back, YouTube. Uh, I awkwardly cut myself off. Um, I bumped a button on the side of this phone. I'm shooting on the new Obama phone, Obama phone number four, uh, the ACK. That's what it shows up on lists as, ACK, 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 ACK. Um, yeah, I somehow cut my video off by bumping uh, something on the side of it. So, note to self, don't do that. Um, so yeah, I shot video with it yesterday <coughs> and it cut me off at 10 minutes and I thought the thing was out of space <coughs> until I looked at my video today. I was going to, I'm thinking, well, I'll shoot video on it because I'm only got about 4% power on the iPhone right now. I fell asleep doing something on it, didn't plug it in, woke up to it completely dead. So, so yeah, I'm not trying to use the power on that. Um, anyway, 
well, any more than I have to. I need to use it if I want to rent a scooter because all my scooter rental apps are on it. Um, anyway, uh, that's why I, I, so I was thinking, well, well, I'm going to shoot video on it as I walk back to the, you know, or get myself back to the Wander Inn. I need to, uh, I'm going to need to upload the one video that I shot that I thought ran out of space, um, to the, uh, to the Microsoft cloud or, or to some, some cloud, something and, and get it, get it off this phone, uh, to free up the space, shoot another video. So I checked to see how much space I have and I forget how much it is. I mean, this phone doesn't have much space, but it certainly has enough space to shoot video. So I'm thinking, well, why the hell did it cut me off? And so <clears throat> I looked at the video I shot yesterday and it's 10 minutes and I'm thinking, oh damn, did I get another one of those shitty ass Obama phones? that isn't capable of shooting more than a 10 minute video. And so that's, that's how my first of all phone and the video quality was awful. There's still segments of this vlog that are up. You got to go back a couple of years to find them, but the, the quality of the video on that thing was just horrific. <laughs> like it looked, it just looked like everything was underwater. I mean, I don't know. The last couple of videos I've seen off the iPhone seven plus are pretty, pretty freaking bad too, but the difference between this phone and the, uh, the iPhone is this phone is brand new and presumably functioning like better than it ever will. Whereas the, uh, the iPhone has a, uh, has a bad camera and I'm well aware it has a bad camera. So, you know, it's, it's, it's doing what it can with what it has left. Uh, anyway, um, Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, so, so I looked at the video and I see it's exactly ten minutes. I'm thinking, well, that's damn. This looks like it's a nicer phone than my last Obama phone was, but that's a pretty shitty limitation. Um, and I go into the. I'm thinking, this is, could that be a setting? Maybe. So I go into the settings for my camera. It took me a while to find it. First, I'm going through settings for the phone. It's not in the phone. It's it's, uh, you go to the camera, there's a setting icon. Uh, once you set it, set it for video as opposed to taking just pictures, um, a little camera icon that you hit, and it was a setting in there. And uh, there's one for the resolution. Its default setting was 1080p. I went ahead and backed it off to 720p since I don't have a lot of space on here. And generally speaking, I always shoot this vlog at 720p. And, uh, the other thing that I did with it, you know, at this point, until the camera situation gets better, I'm thinking about switching that back, switching that down to 480p, actually. Oh, I'm going to walk through the encampment here. This always makes me a little nervous. Saw two really hot women approaching this the other day when I got on my scooter. When I got on the spin scooter, I rode through the park and then I rode out Oak Street. Got a homeless guy complaining about how he believes some other homeless person stole his stuff and denied it. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty uh, typical homeless dude type conversation. That woman walking, I don't think is homeless. I think she's just a pedestrian. Walking with a purse and a smartphone and looking at her smartphone. Girl, you need to have a way more situal awareness in the direction you're walking. Um... Anyway, so yeah, there was this, there was setting for resolution, switch the new phone to 720p, and then sure as shit, there's a there's a setting to cap the length of videos. Why is that even a thing? I'm just like, why is that even a thing, and why would the default be 10 minutes? 
I mean, why would you want to limit shooting videos to 10, arbitrarily limit it to 10 minutes? Like, I can understand maybe somebody only want to shoot 10 minutes of video when you're, when you're done shooting video. Hit stop. <laughs> you know, like I'm about to do here because I found another line. Although it's got, it's got a red light on it. The other one I saw had a green light on it, which kind of makes me think that maybe that one's not available to rent. Oh, the bus is still running right now. Unfortunately, I don't have any bus passes on me. I need to purchase some bus passes. Although I saw I can purchase bus fare on the, uh, on the app and just scan the app. Although at this point, paying bus fare just seems kind of silly because I mean, I've got less than a mile of a walk from here to, uh, less than a mile of walk from here to the bar. Um, oh yeah, nobody pushed the back button, so the cycle's super short. The cycle ends up not being short enough for me to make it across the street. That's all right, I made it across the street. Oh, I think I'm going to walk south. Plus, I don't like walking on roads. 44th Street looks like it's got some interesting characters waiting at the bus stop that didn't get on the bus that just passed. Oh. Not sure when this intersection became such a mecca for homeless people, because it wasn't like this when I moved here. And once upon a time in shooting this vlog, there was a dead dog at that bus stop. And the dead dog at the bus stop was not as sketchy as that bus stop is right now. Holy shit. Um, wow, I couldn't even tell you how many people were there between the people that were at the bus stop, the people behind the bus stop, and the, uh, the, the, the dark guys with the bicycle that were like behind the bus stop. Um, Here's a scooter that's pulsing green. I think I'm going to try riding this one. I was going to talk more about what the scooters did and the scooter apps. Um, now there's the display I was telling you about. I'm not sure what that little symbol at the top is. Um, but yeah, that's the lime symbol I was telling you about that I'm assuming is a battery gauge. Um, let me check the steering wheel. I wanted to check the handlebars, make sure they were straight, because that last one that I rode wasn't. It was awful. Um, so the, uh, yeah, the other app, um, the spin scooter, when, it, when, I, when I parked, it asked me to secure the, uh, it asked me to secure the scooter to a bike rack on the sidewalk which bike racks on sidewalks in Phoenix, generally speaking, are not a thing. Um, and when it asked me to do that, like at first I was just going to park it like I would normally park a scooter, which is on the edge of a sidewalk so as to not obstruct the sidewalk, kind of like you know, when I surfed them and I worked for Lime. And then when it asked for me to lock it, I went ahead and locked it, like you see it in the video, against the traffic light pole, but also, you know, not blocking. Because, I mean, there's no bike rack. That's the closest thing to a bike rack that's there. So, whatever. Um, but there was no kind of threat. But I, I commented, you know, there was no kind of... It didn't tell me I couldn't do that, and there was no kind of threat of a fine or anything. Well, when I ended my ride on the Lime, it did threaten a fine if I didn't lock it. It threatened charging a fine of up to... A fine of $25 if I wasn't locked properly. So, um... Oh, look at this shit. I just opened Lime, but I got this thing here. And can you see that in my camera? No, you see white. White. Well, that sucks. It says, uh, it says, we're in sleep mode. Phoenix requires us to park for the night at 11.59 p.m. We'll be back up and riding at 4.59 a.m. Wow. It's 12.05 right now. 
So Venix has a thing that requires that they not be usable. Wow. I think I want to send Phoenix a, an email and tell them that I'm a karaoke DJ who gets off work at 2.30 a.m. and would really like to be able to ride a scooter home. What the hell is this? Um, in fact, I think I want to screenshot this. And I'm going to need two hands to make it. Wow, look at all this garbage here. I don't know if you all can see it, but a big old bag full of garbage right there. Not cool. Oh. I think I want to screenshot that. I really want to screenshot that. Of course, where can I set my phone down? Oh, wow. There's somebody left a lime scooter actually obstructing that driveway. That's wild. Um, I can set the phone down right there. Oh, there's my iPhone hits the ground. Oh, by the way, I managed to get my iPhone on the ground yesterday. But then I thought somebody stole it. What? I sat it down, I knocked it off the table. Possibly somebody else knocked it off the table. I doubt it, though. Um, and shattered the screen that I just just bought for the thing. So, I'm well, not too happy about that. It seems like it was less than a month ago when I put a new screen on that. Flip this camera back around. Well, this is, it is hard to... This is not shooting night video so great. It, at least what I'm seeing on the screen looks pretty dark. So yeah, somebody left a scooter parked right in the middle of the driveway. Yeah, I'm not going to move it. Just think, I could be riding it out of that out of that spot if it wasn't for City of Phoenix's stupid policy of trying to restrict the mobility of a so-called free people at night by limiting transportation offer options at night. Phoenix requires us to park for the night at 11:59 p.m. We'll be back and riding at 4:59 a.m. That's absolute shit. Absolute shit. Got it. And of course, if that's a city of Phoenix, uh, if that's a city of Phoenix thing, and of course, this street doesn't have a sidewalk, so I gotta walk out here on the other side of parked cars. That's always uncomfortable. Um, not that there's hardly any traffic on this street ever. I forget the name of the street. I hardly ever, ever walk down this one. I'm sure I've shot a vlog of me walking down it before, though. It's not one I walk on very often. As generally speaking, if I'm walking and I came from my place, I'm either coming out Palm, if I'm going to point south of my place, and I'm coming out Oak, if I'm going to places north. It's very unusual for me to come out Oak and then change directions to go to a point south of Palm. But I was thinking about going down Oak and Taking the first lime that I saw, which ended up not being an option. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mayor Kate. Uh, I'm expecting I'm going to have the same issue with lime, but let's open up, the, or open up, what do you call it? Open up the spin app. My bad, spin. See what it says. Park responsibly. You got a pop up. So, of course, the camera doesn't really show that very well either. But. Park responsibly. The city requires that all rides are parked in a corral. That is outdated information. Uh, the corral only applies to the the corral thing. That's that's a thing, and it was a thing with the city of Phoenix for the original scooter program in Phoenix, which didn't include this part of town, uh, which was just um, like about a, a square mile and a half uh, downtown. One and a half square miles of downtown Phoenix. Um, maybe it's a little bit more than that, but but anyway, um, yeah, parking had to be in a designated corral in downtown Phoenix. But since they've expanded the Phoenix coverage area, they have not made corrals outside of the downtown area. So so yeah, that's not uh, that's outdated information in the app here on Spin. Park responsible city requires all rides are parked in a corral. Look out for the decal. See suggested parking locations in the app and parking designated zones to avoid 
Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, fines. And then there's a button that says sounds good, which uh, presumably I hit to continue. Um, that doesn't sound good, actually. That sounds, sounds shitty. Um, do I have another option to close it other than agreeing that it sounds good? Because I don't agree that it sounds good. I think it sounds shitty. Um, yeah, there's a little X in the corner. Yeah, that closes it. All right. Well, I didn't get a notice telling me that the uh, scooters are dormant, so that's a good thing. However, this is a bad thing. I don't know if y'all can see that map. It shows up a little bit. Um, there are absolutely no spin rental scooters available between here and the Wanderer. So. Looks like I'm just uh, wandering to the wander in on foot, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, yesterday, when I when I rode the scooters, um, when I rode the scooters, there were uh, I noticed that the amount of spin scooters in this general area was very very few. Uh, I did get lucky that there was one really close to my place at the south. Um, at the southeast corner of Pierce Park. Ooh, I like their lighting on their walkway. That's that's really cool. Almost got like a Star Wars sort of effect. I like that a lot. Doesn't really light up the walkway, but it it but it creates like lighting on the walkway to show you where to walk. I like that a lot. Different. Pretty cool. Um Pretty sure this is 42nd Street here. Look at the street sign. I should remember the name of this street. I absolutely don't. Hubble. I don't want to forget that one. Hubble Street. What's this sign? Lost Dog. Oh, that's sad. <clears throat> In fact, I remember when I walked through here and noting that Hubble lines up perfectly with what appears to be a through alley going further... Uh, Going further west. Oh, yeah, I'm going south. Walking south down uh, down 42nd Street. Uh, anything else worth mentioning about the scooters? Um, I definitely wanted to leave. There was a place to leave comments. At least I think there was a place to leave comments about what I didn't like about my ride. Because um, at the end of a ride, it lets you rate it on a scale of one to five stars. Um, and I went ahead and gave the ride that I had on Spin a five star review. You know, I gave it five stars and I didn't, I didn't leave any comments because all in all, the, the ride with Spin was great. It was a lot pricier than I thought it was going to be. It was like five bucks and change. It was almost six dollars. So that seemed pretty expensive to ride a scooter from the corner of Pierce, the far corner of Pierce Park to the corner of. Um, To the corner of 38th Street and Thomas. Yeah, I didn't feel like I got much of the way of transportation value for nearly six bucks. Um, Lime, however, every time I open the Lime app, it does offer like a frequent writers program. Um, so I do want to look into that. I don't know that I'm going to use it enough to justify purchasing it, but um, they had something like that when I last used them. Uh, other than my ride yesterday, the last time I rode with Lime was about a year ago when I was in Portland, which I'm not sure if I covered that in my Portland vlog or not. I really didn't vlog much when I was in Portland, and I, I totally regret that because I, I did so much and wandered around so much in Portland and shot very little video in Portland just because I was so overwhelmed by kind of taking in Portland myself, and uh, and now I don't. Like my memories of it are kind of, kind of vague, and uh, and of course I don't have a whole lot of video to go back to reference that. But I do remember several times going for some extended uh, scooter rides on Lime, and Lime had a program which kept me pretty loyal to Lime while I was there, even though there were other scooter brands available to ride. Um, they had a thing where you could pay for. 
like a flat rate for unlimited scooter use for 24 hours, which was which was pretty awesome. I mean, there was a limit of how much an individual ride could be, how long, but I think it was like 90 minutes. Like, like I, which which is more of a battery limitation to be honest than a, than an actual app limitation. But yeah, it told me my I couldn't have a ride more than. 90 minutes, but it wasn't limited to like 90 minutes of riding in that 24 hour period. Like if I did have a ride that exceeded 90 minutes, which I never did. I never, even my longest rides that I took, which were practically across, you know, going from downtown. At one point I went from, uh, just on the, I know I wasn't downtown, but I was semi downtown just, but across the river, uh, Cross the river just just east of downtown and then I rode from there all the way across town to north of I want to say it's called Columbia Street the road that goes east and west but it's sort of an angle north of Lombard uh, that sort of separates the, the the city grid system from the large industrial area to the north uh, there's like a canal or like a canal or some kind of waterway there uh, that runs north of there, and I think there's tracks that run along, yeah, it's definitely train tracks that run along that street. Anyway, as I crossed that street and went a little bit north of there, um, the ride ended, because I was trying to ride to the, uh, Amazon, I think it's EUG5, the Amazon, fulfillment center that my daughter works at, so I could talk to HR there about something I couldn't figure out on my app, relative to when I would get, be getting back to work at home, and, um, and I kind of wanted to see the place anyway, being a, you know, Amazon, being the Amazon person that I am. And, uh, as I, as I, uh, well, as I got across the bridge on, I forget what street I was on, but as I went north of what I think is Columbia Street, I went north, I, uh, I exited the coverage area. At which point, like, I couldn't, not only did I lose power on the scooter, but it wouldn't let me in my ride there. So I had to, like, basically kick scoot it, you know, move it under my own power to where it was back in the coverage area. And, uh, and, what, and before I was able to, you know, yeah, basically I had to get back to Columbia, or just north of Columbia Street before I could park it. The, the border isn't actually the street, but a wee bit north of there. But I had to get back in that designated coverage area to park it, and um, kind of weird that that industrial area is outside the coverage area when you consider how many people could potentially need to, you know, potentially work in that area, and could potentially ride a scooter to work at one of those many warehouses over there, and hotels, and all, you know, I don't know, to me, to me, the scooter coverage areas and cutting off areas of commerce in them just seems stupid, but that's what these municipalities do in the way they regulate their rental scooters which seriously limits people using them as a serious transportation method. Um, anyway, I, uh, oh, anyway, that, that ride was long and even that was definitely less than an hour. So I didn't come anywhere close to the, for, uh, the 90 minute, I think it was the 90 minute limit. I could be wrong. Could have been an hour limit. I don't know. For some reason I'm remembering it as being a 90 minute limit, but yeah, when anyway, from the way I understood it, though, like, even if I did have my ride in because I hit that time limit, all I would have to do is just park that scooter and walk to the nearest available scooter. And they were, like, everywhere in Portland and just start another ride. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't very expensive. It seems like it was 10 bucks for 24 unlimited rides for 24 hours. And when you consider, like, I had a single ride yesterday that didn't go very far that cost me... Uh, it cost me six bucks. I mean, ten bucks for twenty-four hours is if you're going to do more than two short rides. Is uh, is the better option financially? Anyway, it sounds like there's a lot of people on the back patio over at uh, at Wander Ends. I think I'm in my ride right now. I'm kind of looking to see if I see Priscilla's vehicle at the parking lot. I didn't really talk about how much she frustrated me and let me down uh, last night. And the uh, and today, but it was uh, it's pretty bad, and consequently, I don't really want to see her. Um, doesn't look like she's here. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna pop in the bar. Thanks for coming with on this walk.